And here you are, on Earth, 66 million years ago. It's one of the warmest periods in the planet's history. There are no ice caps yet. Everything is lush and green. Dinosaurs roam the Earth. Massive sauropods peacefully chew on flowering plants and trees, their young ones following closely by their side. Ah, You strain your neck to see their heads five stories above you. But that's when you see something else. A bright spot in the sky. A shooting star. Ah, make a wish. Wait a minute. The star grows bigger, brighter. Little do the mass reptiles know. Today marks the beginning of one of the largest mass extinction events in Earth's history. Three quarters of life on our planet will be wiped out. Hey, we'll just hide over here and watch. Five seconds before impact. The meteorite rips a hole through our atmosphere like a needle in a balloon. The resulting supersonic shock wave starts to ripple around the globe. You'd hear it on the opposite side of the planet. The cosmic monster falling toward the Earth is the size of Mount Everest, at least 6 miles wide and weighing 460 trillion tons. The meteor is coming in hot and fast, 12 miles per second, heading right for the Yucatan Peninsula in present-day Mexico. At that speed, it could travel from LA to New York in under 4 minutes. Impact The mountain-sized asteroid smashes into the Earth. If only it had been anywhere else, life on this planet might look a lot different today. The Yucatan Peninsula, almost entirely underwater then, was one of just 8 places on the entire globe that would have let a giant space rock wipe out nearly all life on the planet meaning the asteroid only had a 13% chance of causing a mass extinction. And it happened to hit just the right spot. Well, aren't we lucky? At the point of impact, there's an explosion a billion times more powerful than even the most massive volcanic eruption. It looks like a new sun has appeared on our planet's surface. The meteorite digs into the Earth's crust and explodes into a million pieces. You can still see the scar it left. The Chicxulub crater is 93 miles wide and 12 miles deep. It could fit the entire state of Vermont and 24 Burj Khalifas stacked on top of each other. Something that leaves a scar like that has global consequences. The Earth ripples. The shock wave spreads for thousands of miles. The air blasts flatten forests in a second. Everything within striking radius is set ablaze. Nothing survives ground zero. But that was just the beginning. Smaller fragments of the meteorite, as well as parts of the Earth displaced by the giant hole it dug, go ricocheting out, reaching as far as Canada. The sky lights up with fireballs. They smash into the surface as well. Dinosaurs that weren't in the blast radius run in panic. But they have nowhere to hide. It's only about to get worse. The shock waves race across the sea. The tsunami is nearly a mile high when it hits the coast. The waves keep traveling, reaching the furthest corners of the planet. Even across the Pacific and up into the North Atlantic, they're five stories high. They wash away everything in their path. Besides the raging fires and skyscraper-sized tsunamis, the Earth is shaking from the worst earthquakes in history. A planet lush and teeming with life only a few minutes ago has turned into a nightmarish place. But this was only phase one. Five minutes after impact. Small rocks, dust, and ash rise high up into the atmosphere. These objects heat up and melt. They turn into hot lava that begins to fall to the ground like burning rain. Ten hours after impact. Fires continue to engulf everything in their path. Some surviving dinosaurs in North America try to escape to unknown territories. But now they're in dense swamps and can't escape. One month after impact. 15 trillion tons. Two and a half million times the weight of the Great Pyramid of Giza. That much ash and soot are released into the atmosphere. The cloud covers the entire planet and blocks out the sun. The Earth sinks into darkness. Surviving plants can't photosynthesize. Oxygen levels drop. Any animals left at this point are finally done in from lack of air. But the worst consequence was the extinction of photoplankton. The entire oceanic food chain starts to collapse like a house of cards. 
Many marine animals have lost their main source of food. Surviving animals on land also can't find anything to eat. There are no plants for the herbivores, and soon no herbivores left for the meat-eaters. And still, there's the acid rain. The Chicxulub meteorite hit a place where there was a lot of sulfur. The heat of the impact vaporizes the toxic gas instantly. It mixes with the air in the atmosphere. Acid rains fall all over the planet. The oceans become toxic. And if all that doesn't get them, the coal finally finishes off the job. With the sun blocked out, the burning fireball that is our planet starts to cool down. What's left in the wake? Plants are a little luckier than animals. Seeds and pollen are able to survive these harsh times. The first to slowly paint the charcoal planet green are ferns. The wind carries their seeds, sprinkling them across the Earth over 10 years. Then come the palms. The new planets produce oxygen and feed small mammals. Of the reptiles, only turtles and ancient ancestors of crocodiles can survive the temperature and acidity of the planet's waters. Unbelievably, some bird-like dinosaurs survive too. Other species of birds evolve and survive to this day. Sadly though, all terrestrial animals over 50 pounds in weight went extinct. It took much longer for the animal kingdom to recover. Larger mammals, such as rhinos, began to appear only 15 million years after the dinosaurs disappeared. Blue whales, the largest living creature this planet has ever seen, bigger than any of the dinos, only showed up a little over 4 million years ago. Did the dinos have a fighting chance? Scientists say that if the meteorite had hit in the deeper ocean, the story would have gone a lot differently. Yes, the resulting tidal waves would have been 10 times higher than the already massive ones that rippled across the planet. But even a giant mega-tsunami wouldn't be able to wipe out 75% of plant and animal life on Earth. What really did the dinosaurs in was the global blackout. If the meteorite had hit in deeper water, not the shallow sea of the Gulf of Mexico, there wouldn't have been so much dust and ash in the atmosphere. That dropped the oxygen levels and cut off the food chain from the very bottom. There's a theory that climate change and other conditions on Earth 66 million years ago would have still wiped out the dinosaurs, no meteorite necessary. It could be a supervolcano erupting and spewing out large amounts of sulfur and ash into the atmosphere. Perhaps the meteorite just sped up the inevitable. Now let's move on to a more interesting question. Could humanity survive a meteorite impact like that? Back then? Not a chance, obviously. But if something like that were to happen in our time? We have an advanced intellect and technology. We fill the cosmos with probes and satellites, so we know about any possible meteors headed straight our way. It wouldn't take us by surprise. Now, we might have to hide deep underground to avoid the blast wave and tsunamis. And you'd need enough food down there to last for at least a year. And don't forget your toilet paper. But with the right prep, humanity could stand a chance. The main problem after such an event is to survive the global winter when the ash covers the sky. But our species can handle it. Just ask anyone living in Omayakon, Russia. The town of 500 people holds a Guinness World Record for the coldest inhabited place on Earth. They've seen the thermometer read minus 90 degrees Fahrenheit. What about preserving plant and animal life? Our species has been working on that for a long time. There's a World Seed Storage Facility on Salvbard Island. It's about 40 stories underground and can hold over 2 billion samples. The location was chosen because of the permafrost climate and low tectonic activity. Preserving all the planet's animals would be a tougher job. Perhaps genetic engineering, cloning, or something else would work. Herding them all down into a bunker? I mean, crocs, bears, and snakes included? Mm, I think I'd rather try my luck above ground, thank you.